Hi everyone, welcome back to our Firepower Appliances series. In this video, we're going to look at data link resiliency of our solution with ASA HA with FTD cluster running as NGIPS inline pairing mode. As we mentioned, we're focused on Firepower 4100, where we use Chassis Manager to set up the cluster and also install these applications. In this particular design, we're leveraging Active Standby ASA with FTD cluster running inline pairing mode, and we're dual attaching between ASA and FTD, and single attaching in this particular demo to the switches on the bottom there. So let's take a look at our first test. We're going to take a look at north side of ASA's data links into the switches directly and we're gonna see what happens when we eliminate um, these connections here ETH11 on both. For FTD side we have a cluster in place as we reviewed in previous video. In terms of policy what I had done here is define a more specific policy that leverages application visibility and control and I am doing something different for context one that I identify with inside VLAN tag on ASA context as uh, 920. What I'm doing is allowing SSH only on port 22. I am blocking SSH on any other ports coming through the firewall and I'm also blocking any other protocol that comes to port SSH. Uh, I'm doing that in context one and in context two um, I'm you can see that I don't have I'm not blocking SSH elsewhere so I should be allowed to do what I need to there um, what we'll do is we'll watch our connections here and in this use case here if we take a look at our current events that we have in place um, I have SSH currently running on one of the ports uh, 2222 through context 2 and it's being inspect inspected by FTD2 so unit 2 in the FTD cluster and I also opened a cup just one HTTP connection here to prove that actually both FTD units in a cluster are inspecting traffic so we have one active ASA handling traffic but it is sending to both FTDs for um, this uh, inspection that you see here. So let's take a look at our ASA units and FTD. First we have our active standby ASA. We can see that we have all the interfaces monitored here. Um, two contexts as usual. If we take a look at our context one there is two connections and detailed information about those shows that they were up for more than five days. If we take a look at the other context we'll see the same information here. Uh, two of the same connections. Actually there's uh, an additional one that I opened to a um, different port than usual for SSH. So <clears throat> here If we look at the interfaces, here if we look at interfaces, we have our north port channel 10. That's what we're going to deal with first. And then we have a port channel 20 that goes down through our FTD cluster running in IPS port pairing mode. Looking at our FTD, we see here two units in a cluster, master and slave, and if we take a look at the connections here we see which ones are being handled by this unit and which ones are being handled by FTD2 unit. So here you can see that most of the connections uh, are running through unit FTD2. Here I can now take a look at um, my test connections. I have the two SSH connections running top. I have the two 
iperf connection sending UDP packets through as well. Um, so here I have my test connection uh, that I'll just uh, come back to. Here basically I'm allowed to go to host C. Uh, just reviewing back at our slide here. So I'm allowed to go through non-22 um, port destination between host A and host C through context 2 and then my context 1 uh, FTD is blocking uh, that connection everything outside of the port 22 so A to B is going to be denied so here I have I'm trying here and I can see that connection works through um, <clears throat> context 2 between host A and host C and if we try to go through context one, I am seeing denies here. If we take a look at our events real quick, we'll see those denies occur there. And after that, we'll be ready to do our testing here. So here we can see blocked by reset. Here, SSH client going to port 2222 occurred on unit 1 of FTD and we can see that um, the previous connection was load balance here between the two units um, and SSH work through context 2. Okay now we can take a look at our test. The first test we're going to deal with is bringing down data plane towards north uh, set of switches here with uh, VPC 110 and our ASA 1 is active unit as we showed earlier. So going to our switch we'll bring down the port channel 10 so this does not cause you know bringing down one of the links in the VPC does not cause any outage that's pretty simple here everything is still running and then when I go to switch 2 here and once I shut down that port I can see that there is a little hiccup in connectivity my TCP connections with top are doing just fine and looking at ASA it has switched to standby unit and FTDs had not changed in terms of their cluster membership master and slave is still in place and connections are still um, handled uh, properly through those units so FTD cluster is intact and I had switched between the two units uh, between ASA 1 and 2 we will re-enable that VPC so that we can proceed and work on the south port channel <clears throat> While that's occurring, we can see that the interface check became okay. I will bring up, um, just change the active role back to ASA1. So now let's take a look at our second test where we're going to focus on the south side uh, data link resiliency where connections of these VPCs as you can see they're dual attached to from the ASA primary active to two FTDs and from there they're single attached in this case to the switches as we discussed we can actually add additional attachments on the bottom to improve resiliency in this case we'll test that out later but currently a single link that we bring down in this case is going on the switch is going to bring out FTD1 out of the cluster so that is part of our resilience and we'll check that now so we have our <clears throat> two units in active standby all the interfaces are monitored we have two units in the cluster and all the connectivity is still working properly UDP connections are um, properly doing uh, there so we will go on switch one and remove uh, or shut down ETH15 so here 
we go on ETH25 and as we shut that down we see that FTD1 unit pretty much came out of the cluster right away our ASA is still intact uh, we didn't notice any hiccup on our UDP connections here as you can see and our TCP connections also stayed intact so here we're concluding this video where we are testing resiliency of this solution with um, single attachment on the bottom of our cluster so we basically went through and removed this one VPC that's indicated here we also worked on the south use case where we eliminated one of the links that single attached into FTD uh, master unit hope this was useful for you thank you for watching and See you next time.